It's hard to believe that the Toronto Zoo first opened its doors 45 years ago in August of 1974, and today there are more than 5,000 animals representing more than 450 species. Joining us now is Andrea Dross. She's the manager of wildlife care. Boy, Alex, we thought we had a cool job. Right? <laughs> Welcome to what she said. Oh, thank you very much. This is a job I, th I have so much respect for. You began your career in nutritional research at, Tor at the Toronto Zoo in 1991 while going to the University of Guelph for zoology. And a fun fact, you were hired into this role because of how fast you could type. So tell us what made you want to go into zoology. Yes, that's um, absolutely true. I was a fast typer back in my university days, um, and uh, I was hired in the nutritional area to do data entry. Um, but fortunately for me, um, I was so fast at typing that I got all the got through all the data basically within a month of my four month contract. Oh. So that allowed a little bit of room for me to do other interesting things, which included nutritional studies with uh, green water dragons, which are really neat little lizards. So since then, you've worked in various areas of the zoo, getting an array of experience, working with many diverse collections. You probably have so many stories. What has been a highlight for you? I have too many highlights to give you one. I don't know. Um, I've been a keeper, working with naked mole rats, for example. They're, and they're such a fascinating animal. They're an animal that has a social structure, like a honey beehive with yes. a queen a I queen didn't know mole this. rat, worker mole rats, and soldiers. Um, I've also been an animal shipper, moving everything from tiny little tadpoles, Puerto Rican crested toad tadpoles, back to Puerto Rico for release, um, but also moved seven rhinos in my time. And each of those seven rhino transfers were an amazing highlight. Yeah, but people don't understand how complicated this no. is. No, yeah, the shipping of animals, especially across international borders, yeah, that can be extremely Extreme, complicated, yeah. yeah. You took a brief hiatus at one point where you identified Indonesian wasps by the veins in their wings. And another fun fact, uh, this is where you realized you weren't meant to follow a career working exclusively with microscopes. So what's your favorite part about this job? Yeah, no, I was fortunate enough to get a six-month contract working for the Royal Ontario Museum, looking through a microscope day in, day out, and I quickly, uh, quickly saw that that was not the job for me. Um, so one of the best parts about the many jobs that I've held at the Toronto Zoo is how physical the job is. You're up and on site quite a bit with animals, with, with so many people. Um, but in addition to that, there's no two days that are ever the same when you're working at the Toronto Zoo. You're working with live animals, so you're, you're working with what you're presented with that day. Now, you also oversaw the breeding and care of the Black-Footed Ferret Recovery Program, this included raising healthy kits to send to boot camp for eventual release back into the wild. Yeah. This sounds really cool. Tell people about that. Uh, the, that program is special to my heart. Um, black footed ferrets were declared extinct back in the 80s. We, we thought that they were gone from the earth. And Where do they normally live? Um, North America. Okay. So, okay. Um, they were in Canada at one mm -hmm. point. They were in the States. They, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife accidentally found... Um, black-footed ferrets that they thought were extinct, and they removed those last animals from the wild to start a captive breeding program with, at the time, six different zoos. Um, and so, yeah, for five years, I was lucky enough to, to have babies on the ground every year, and some of those babies stayed in the in the captive breeding mm -hmm. program. Some of them went to, um, to boot camp where um, they get used to being in the wild, but in a safe and closed environment. So they're sort of reintroduced? Very slowly and carefully, yeah. Are black-footed ferrets farther away from extinction now? Absolutely, they are. Um, yeah, going from essentially what was yeah. zero to um, hundreds in the wild now, and certainly hundreds kept back in the captive breeding population. It's uh, The black-footed ferret recovery program is one of the most... Successful? Uh, successful breeding programs within accredited zoos. What is the Species Survival Plan program? I mean, I, I think it's one of the most important reasons, um, from what I understand, um, for the re relocation of animals. 
Yeah, it's, it's a program that was started by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums to help ensure the survival of species in zoos and aquariums. Mm -hmm. um, but it, its main mandate uh, is to also support the recovery in the wild. So just like the black-footed ferrets, um, not, not all zoos, accredited, accredited zoos, necessarily exhibit the animals like the black-footed ferret, but they do have breeding pop populations in the back to help with the uh, recovery of the species. But um, yeah, the SSP programs basically um, have accredited zoos working cooperatively together and and moving animals around from different zoos based on uh, the, their genetic diversity. The zoo is open 364 days of the year. The only day it's closed is Christmas Day. Let's talk about what's coming up. After nightfall at the Toronto Zoo this winter, everyone is invited to Terra Lumina. Now, it's an immersive experience that takes place along a one-and-a-half-kilometer walking path that travels into the year 2099 and back, a time when humans and nature have learned to live in harmony. So, Tell us more about that. No more poachers? No, I'm so excited about this program. And partly because my in my animal shipping days, I had lots of reasons to be at the zoo after hours. Right. And the Toronto Zoo in the dark is different than Toronto Zoo in the light. It, I'm really excited about this, this Lumina experience. It, it is indeed an experience that incorporates vibrant lighting, um, multimedia effects, breathtaking video projections, and an original score that is simply enchanting. And its message, just like what you said, is is a thriving future for our planet. Um, and it, it's not just simply um, like a holiday lights show of sorts. So this is an experience that you just won't be able to find anywhere else in southern Ontario. Um, but my words cannot do it justice. Uh, I really recommend that everybody check out the Toronto Zoo website, look at the Lumina page, and see a more uh, visual representation of what I've just said. Let me ask you, are you optimistic about the future for animals on this planet? Animals, I, birds, and fish. I'm, I'm including everybody. I am. I am because because of people just like you and just like me. Um, there's so many really good people that have animals and and life on this planet as um, it, it's just so important and people are so passionate about doing good, doing better than what we have been doing. So I personally am quite optimistic about it, yes. And one thing that I don't think many people realize, uh, I mean, I've had people say to me, oh, zoos, I'm, I'm not in favor of zoos because, you know, the animals are locked up. What they don't realize is that that's just the front. That isn't what's important. What's really important is what happens behind the scenes. All these programs to save animals, breeding programs, all zoos. I mean, this is a model that has changed significantly in it the has. past hundred years. It has, and we're even continuing to try and change that. We don't want to be hidden anymore. So programs like we have what's called a head starting program for our blanding turtles, where we grow them up for the first couple of years in captivity. But instead of doing that behind the scenes, we now have an exhibit on site that shows you these animals that are are growing bigger so that by the time we do release them they're they're going they're going to be big enough that their survival ship will increase substantially well uh where can people go to get more information about the zoo's events and programming calendar and and some of these things that we've talked about at torontozoo.com um, torontozoo.com yeah, and it, go to town go to the website there's an events calendar that's yeah. super easy to use you just look at the day that you're interested in visiting the zoo to see if if what's going on that day or if you want to look specifically at at events that are happening we have so many events happening all the time our brew at the zoo or um, multiple animal awareness days right now even we have a traveling historic exhibit called the great war in color which is at the zoo until uh, Remembrance Day. Um, we're so proud to be hosting this collection of colorized photos as the photos truly have the power to transport us to a time that was so poignant that we must remember. Yeah. So, Well, Andrea, fascinating stuff, all of this, and really touches my heart, as you know. But thank you so much for joining us today. And it's I hope everyone gets to go to the zoo and, and uh, see what's really going on there. Oh, very good. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you. Well, she